In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to upgrade your SaaS onboarding to cut churn so customers stop leaving you and they pay you for longer. We've hired customer success managers for over 20 clients, and I've seen both small and large SaaS companies use this method to improve retention by 25%. If you're running a SaaS where customers leave before they start getting value, this is the exact framework you need. Let's get into it. Why listen to me? I spent six years as a management consultant at Deloitte, helping Fortune 500s with their growth and churn. That was both, we, I did that both in both SaaS and in FinTechs. Since Deloitte, I've hired 93 people and we've placed them in over 20 businesses. And effectively for the CSMs, we've reduced churn for up to 20%. And so that's the playbook that I'm gonna share with you today. Now, if you have a SaaS, I'm sure this sounds familiar, where you've built an awesome product, a lot of people are signing up for it, but you do have people who just aren't if you have a second offer, they're not buying your second offer. They're leaving early in the first few weeks. And how do you stop that? That's so we're gonna get into that today. I'm actually really excited about customer onboarding. And I nerd out on this. And the main reason is if you look at the people who, the customers who leave your business, one in four people who leave, leave because of bad onboarding. And so that means that every, if you're getting recurring revenue from each person, every month they don't stay, you're losing revenue. And also you can't upsell folks because a lot of upselling happens like during onboarding is when people are most excited to work with you. So a lot of that initial upsells happen during the onboarding process or on the back end, if they have a lot of questions, if customers have a ton of questions then your team is overwhelmed with really honestly questions that should have been answered during onboarding. And so I'll show you how to, how to fix that. Why do so many customers leave during onboarding? Everybody thinks that if they make amazing product, people will stay, which sounds awesome. And it's true to an extent, but not really. And the reason I say not really is imagine you have the best product in the world, but no customer understands why that product is so great for them. Then they'll leave even though you have the best solution for them. And that's where onboarding comes in. All onboarding is, is taking, first off, making it so easy for customers to understand how to use your product. But then two is taking what makes your product so valuable and putting it in their head so they understand how amazing you actually are and they want to stay. Heck, they don't want to upsell. And if you, when you, people don't do that right, that's when customers leave and that's when onboarding is bad. And so we're gonna cover three things today. First one is, what are the warning signs that your onboarding is failing? So you know, hey, do I have a problem or should I fix it? The other one is there's actually a lot of different, there's three different models for onboarding. And so I'll show you which one is right for you. And then lastly, we're gonna get super tactical. I'm gonna get you some great tips to actually stop your churn in those tracks. What, what are some warning signs that you have bad onboarding? So for one is how long does it take customers to get their first win? And I think it kind of depends a little bit on how you define your win, right? Like I think you really need to understand what is a win for a customer. And if you have a really complex product, it can take a while for them to get the win. And so part of understanding what makes, what is a quick win that you can have just in the first week. If they can get a win in that first week, they'll stay. But if it takes them 30 days to get a win, they're gonna leave. And so even if you have a complex product, it takes a while to get a win, like we need to figure out What's even just a perceived, what feels like a win to a customer? And how can we get that in early, in the first week, in the first few days? The faster we can get to a win, the more valuable they're gonna perceive your business and they'll stay. Two is how many customers actually finish onboarding? Because if you have say, like some percent of customers just aren't a fit, they join and they leave and that's okay. And I think the rough, the rough benchmark for you should be about 80%. More than 80% stay, it's good, but if you have less than 80% staying, then we have an issue. And so if we have, say, 50% of people don't finish the onboarding and they leave, then we have, it's a warning sign, we need to change your onboarding ASAP. The other thing is how long does it take to actually finish the onboarding? Now, this is a big, this is a big asterisk, it's a little contentious because a lot of people kind of mix, there's a few phases in the onboarding process. There's the welcome, learn what we are, here's what makes us so valuable, etc. And then there's the actual adoption process, which is, okay, so welcome, learn who we are, let's activate you, get, in other words, get your first win. And then after that, it's let's get you to really adopt and use and embed the product. And some people consider that part of onboarding and some people don't. I'm gonna call them differently because I like to actually segment them differently. And so if you don't include activation and adoption as part of your onboarding, then it should be quick. It shouldn't take 30 days to, to get them to understand a win and to learn how to use your product. But so figure out at what point, back to the quick win, at what point do customers activate? Or in other words, figure out how long it takes for a customer to get a quick win, in other words, activate. Now the third warning sign is how long does it actually take your customers to go through onboarding? Now it's gonna be a little hazy depending on how you define onboarding. Onboarding to me is just 
How do you teach someone to use your product and show them how valuable it is? Now there's a bunch of other phases where it's like, where there's also how do you get them to be the first win? Is that part of onboarding or not? Just for the sake, let's say it's not. So you've got one, welcome, let me teach you about the product. Two, let me show you why it's so valuable. And then three, let's get you a quick win as fast as possible. After that quick, that quick win is what we'll call activation. How quickly can we teach you how to use the product and see value? That's gotta be fast. That can be, you can't do that in a month that has to be in week one. And so that onboarding process has to be quick. All right, two more. These are gonna be, I don't wanna keep these off. These are gonna be the more obvious ones, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna get yelled at for excluding stuff. So the, the big one's bad survey scores. The part that's less obvious about this is how to actually incorporate a survey score into your process. So survey score for this case could be popular ones are CSAT and NPS. I can do a separate video, comment below if you wanna see more details on how to do this. But, but if you have the survey process in place, seeing that you get bad survey results from onboarding is a clear sign your onboarding is not working. And the last one that's super common is customer support tickets or however you handle questions, whether it's email, whether you do handle it, whether it's customer support. If you get a lot of these questions during onboarding that really should be answered during onboarding, then we have an onboarding issue. At the beginning, I promise you, there's a bunch of different types of onboarding, three. And some are gonna differ depending on what your business is, who your customers are, et cetera, so I'll show you real quick. So there's three types of, I call it onboarding and how customer success is involved. There's high touch, low touch. I'm gonna call it no, three is no touch. The technical jar term is tech touch. I hate technical terms. <laughs> Let's just call it no touch. Now. Okay, what's high touch? High touch is if you're, it's a good fit for you if it's highly customized. Like you have a few customers who pay you a lot of money and you want individual customer success managers handling a few clients, great, that's high touch. Low touch, or let's skip to the end. No touch is if it's the opposite. It's high volume of clients. You have a ton of clients, but each customer doesn't pay you much money. If that's the case, that's gonna be a no touch or tech touch, whatever you wanna call it. And then the middle one, and that's what we're gonna focus on, is low touch. Low touch is where you have a, a ton of people, they're paying small and medium sized amounts, and so you need to figure out how to get a customer success manager or a, a human involved, the human touch at scale. And so for us, for, for our agency, most of our clients who onboard CSMs are in the low touch segment, where it's a lot of community managers who have a ton of people or SaaS companies who have a ton of people. My consulting clients tend to be more high touch because they're bigger deal, bigger deal sizes. The rest of this conversation is gonna be around low touch and how do we, how do we take a, the human touch and scale it? So you can have one person handling hundreds of people at a time. I promise you we'd get super tactical, so let's do it. I'm gonna show you five different ways that you can tactically reduce churn. And what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna assume it's a, it's a you have a, a bunch of customers and you need to do it at scale, right? You wanna have a human involved who's talking to people to build relationships, but to a lot of people. Now, the first one that the first one super common is data triggered. And so that's things like if you collect data on like how your customers actually use your platform and you reach out based on different use cases. That's one example. If a client, if a customer is, has too many days inactive, like they're not using your tool for too many days and you want to reach out and kind of try and get them re-engage. Or let's say they reach a certain milestone. They've gone through onboarding. You want to give them a quick win, like celebrate with them a little bit. Your, your customer success manager can reach out then. Or, or around renewal time. Renewals are a great case because if it's time to renew, you can one, remind them how valuable that renewal is and how valuable you are, but then two, if you need to raise your prices or give them an upsell opportunity, renewal conversation is an excuse for a customer success to reach out to your customers and have them upsell and stay. Okay, two is group calls. And so this could be group calls that teach or see your CSM or customer success manager teaches your people how to use the product or it teaches a skill related to the product or you could hire you bring in industry experts who who can vouch for you and vouch for how amazing your product is so people get excited about your product and want to buy more and stay or three is just a, a quick success check-in right like reach out to folks who who've hit some kind of milestone or a time-based and just check in and, and use this as an excuse to build relationships. Like any excuse for higher value accounts, or remember before, if you've segmented your, your customers based on how they use it, and there's a high, opportunities to become a higher value account, you can have your CSMs reach out for any excuse. And in this case, it's like, okay, you've had this kind of a win with our, with our solution, we'd love to reach out and chat and let, like, let you know how you can have more of a win. 
And so this way you start to build relationships with the highest value folks and it's more targeted based on, on their usage, their milestones, et cetera. And now with this next one, there's a subtle difference, but I think it's really a useful difference. One is with the success check-in, it can be time-based, it doesn't have to be activity-based. Now with, with this one, oh, I went overboard, and with this one, it's usage-based. So like celebrate a quick win, like recognize, like recognize that they've maybe scored a win for using your tool, or on their end, they've, you've gotten them some kind of a success. And if you've gotten them a success and you can celebrate that, they then attribute the value of that success to your tool and then they stay longer and they're more excited about you. And so that's important to like make sure you capture those wins. Okay, lastly, now the big thing with celebrating post onboarding is helping them future pace a little bit. So some of it is like is saying, congrats, you finished the onboarding. Here's the things you need to do after onboarding to make sure you get the value. And if they get big wins for their business, and they attribute it to you, you're in a great spot. Now, if you do this right, I'm a huge fan of the blend of using a human CSM and combining that with automations and self-service. The blend of the two makes the self-service part, makes it super efficient for customers, but then also the human touch makes more trust and loyalty because they feel like they know a person and it's a face. It makes it, I don't know, it makes your company accessible to them. It helps them understand the value better. It helps them kind of get wins faster. And so I love that. And so that blend of how do you take the effectiveness and efficiency of a automated process and combine it with the human touch, which is the face of your business, that I think is gonna get the most value so that customers pay you for longer. They stay, they tell, you, they tell their friend, they're willing to upsell and, and buy the next tier. So do this right and you'll get, I mean the average, if you put in a customer success function in your business, you get on average 25% boost to your revenue. That's insane. If you're doing a million ARR, that's $250,000 a year in, in, in revenue. Uh, so I'm a huge fan. Okay, lastly, next steps. So I've been building this library of just customer attention, tools, frameworks, etc., And all free, all for you. And so if you want this, click the link in the description and happy to share it with you. We have onboarding templates, email sequences, KPI benchmark. Just click the link in the description and we'll send it to you. On the other hand, if you're ready to start scaling your CSM teams, there's also a link below to grab time with me or someone on my team to chat. We can help. Cheers.